They were as he'd left them, hunkered down on their shot-out tires. He approached with a forty-five, cocked in his hand. Dead quiet. Could be because of the moon. His own shadow was more company than he would have liked. Ugly feeling out here. The door of the Bronco was open. When he saw that, he dropped to one knee. He set the water jug on the ground. You dumbass, he said. Here you are, too dumb to live. He turned slowly, skylighting the country. The only thing he could hear was his heart. He made his way to the truck and crouched by the open door. The man had fallen sideways over the console, still trussed in the shoulder belt. Fresh blood everywhere. He could see the truck in the moonlight at the top of the rise. He looked off to one side of it to see it the better. There was someone standing beside it. Then they were gone. There is no description of a fool, he said, that you fail to satisfy. Now you're going to die. He shoved the forty-five into the back of his belt and set off at a trot for the lava ridge. In the distance, he heard a truck start. Lights came on at the top of the rise. He began to run. By the time he got to the rocks, the truck was halfway down the caldera, the lights bobbing over the bad ground. He looked for something to hide behind. No time. He lay face down with his head between his forearms in the grass and waited. At what point would you quit looking for him? Yeah, that's right. There ain't no such a point. He pulled the 45 from his belt so that he wouldn't lose it and set out at a dead run. When he looked back again, it had closed a good part of the distance. He was still a hundred yards from the river and he didn't know what he'd find when he got there. A sheer rock gorge. The first long panes of light were standing through a gap in the mountains to the east and fanning over the country before him. The truck was ablaze with lights, roof rack and bumper spots. The engine kept racing away into a howl where the wheels left the ground. They won't shoot you, he said. They can't afford to do that. The long crack of a rifle went caroming out over the pan. What he'd heard whisper overhead, he realized, was the round passing and vanishing toward the river. He looked back, and there was a man standing up out of the sunroof, one hand on top of the cab, the other cradling a rifle upright. He was hit in the upper arm by a buckshot, and it stung like a hornet. He knew he didn't have time to crawl to the river, and he just rose and made a run for it, splashing across the braided gravel flats and down a long sandbar until he came to the main channel. The cold took his breath. He turned and looked back toward the rim, blowing and backpedaling through the slate blue water. Nothing there. He turned and swam. The current carried him down into the bend of the river and hard up against the rocks. He pushed himself off. The bluff above him rose dark and deeply cupped, and the water in the shadows was black and choppy. When he finally spilled out into the tailwater and looked back, he could see the truck parked at the top of the bluff, but he couldn't see anyone. The buckshot was gone. He unbuttoned his shirt and took it off and pulled his arm around to see the wound. It was just the shape of the buckshot, bleeding slightly, pieces of shirt fiber packed into it. He cut off the sleeves at the elbow and sat and wrapped his feet in them and pulled on the boots. He waited. After a while, a man came out of the cane upriver and paused and stood. He was carrying a machine gun. A second man emerged below him. They glanced at one another and then came on. They passed below him, and he watched them out of sight down the river. He wasn't really even thinking about them. He was thinking about his truck. When the courthouse opened at 9 o'clock Monday morning, someone was going to be calling in the vehicle number off the inspection plate, riveted to the inside of the door, and getting his name and address. This was some 24 hours away. By then they would know who he was, and they would never stop looking for him. Never, as in never. <laughs>